This is the uh, anthropology research facility, which most people call the body farm. Um, this was the first facility that we had. This was a, we poured a 16 by 16 foot concrete slab, put chain link around it, put the bodies in there to begin to look at what happens in decay. And we have bodies not only in here now, but over about a three acre area. This is a more recent experiment that we have been interested in the night predators that feed on decaying bodies. Uh, these would be the raccoons and the possums, the skunks, and uh, the squirrels. You may be able to see a little rodent gnawing on the zygomatic bone. This would be what's called cheekbone. We have a camera over here, and it has a sensor on it, so when uh, something moves, the camera will come on, and we have got some really good pictures of animals eating on various parts of the body. We want to now take you to show you some, one of the early processes of decay, and this is what's called skin slippage. In some cases, between the third and about the seventh day, the epidermal layer of the hand, this is the outside layer with the fingerprints, uh, sloughs off the hand. The hand looks like it's been in the hot tub a little bit too long, has wrinkles on it, and as the time continues, Literally, the epidermal layer will come off of the underlying dermis like a glove, and it's called degloving. In the degloving process, literally, the fingerprints come off of the hand. It comes off on the epidermal layer. And uh, the best means of identifying that individual is not then on the body, but it's on the glove that has come off the hand. Then what you want to do, bring it back to the lab. You put this in warm water overnight. You may put a little biz to make it feel softer the next morning. Next morning when you come in, you put rubber gloves on your hand and you can slip the glove of the victim over your fingers and you can print the victim uh, that way. Not all cases are solved in the first try. Uh, the case we want to tell you about now is one that we've written about in our book Beyond the Body Farm. It's a case of a middle-aged white female named Leoma Patterson who disappeared in uh, about 30 years ago uh, was buried but the family was never thought that that was really uh, their loved one. Uh, we exhumed her and took DNA samples sent both bone and tooth samples uh, in to be analyzed. The first DNA lab came back and said that this woman was not related to any of their of the children. In trying to figure out who this mystery woman was, we did a facial reconstruction. Uh, we also did a video superimposition. Uh, the facial reconstruction, we hired an artist to uh, reconstruct the face. In the video superimposition, we took the skull on one camera and the photograph of the woman on the other, and we superimposed these. I was really surprised at how close the facial reconstruction uh, matched the photographs of Leoma Patterson. And also, uh, when we were able to do the video superimposition, we were able to match up all the anatomical landmarks, and it was an exact match. It was impressive, but neither one of these criteria uh, for identification are positive identification mechanisms. We tried and tried and tried for months to uh, get the correct identification. We were really fortunate in that the original TBI agent was able to find in his files uh, the hair mat and the scalp that had uh, uh, separated from, from the skull. We sent this into Trace Genetics uh, and the people at the Trace Genetics lab were able to get a DNA sample that proved that this was Leoma Patterson. A really good example of a team effort from all kinds of people. I hope that you all have enjoyed your visit and that you've learned something and I will see you next time.